Hello. Hi, everyone. Hattie, we're live. Oh. <laughs> no barking. So, guys, I have to start out with a funny story, which is that Hattie, um, if you don't know, I adopted Hattie when she was seven years old, and she came with a really funny little, um, what are we going to call it, malfunction? Um, she, if you point, she barks. She doesn't like pointing. Hattie, what's that? What's that over there? Oh, oh, I know it's right over there. <laughs> she really does. She doesn't like pointing. Is it over there? Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So that is a funny little trick that Hattie does. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why she came that way. Who taught you that? Oh, oh, are you so mad? Oh, oh, I know this pointing has to stop. Someone has to stop it. She's fine. <laughs> Hi, Malisha. Happy launch day. Um, look at the burglar. I actually think it's because of the squirrels. I think that someone used to tease her and point out squirrels because she I didn't say anything um she knows that word too <laughs> oh my gosh are we so excited about the patterns ah it's launch day um I am like so overwhelmed and excited I forgot how like amped up I get on launch day I'm like all I'm all a tizzy um because there's like so much to do and then like your responses are so great like I'm not used to like that level of like my phone blowing up that it just like gets me really like um I it gets me all a flutter and um I was just thinking back to when I launched Jane which I actually did on my own I didn't have Alicia at that point and I was like so overcome that I had to like go take a bath and take the rest of the day off <laughs> I was just like, I can't, I can't, it's too much excitement. Um, so yeah, I know you guys have lots of questions and lots of things to talk about. We're just gonna take deep breaths for a minute. <laughs> We're just gonna relax a little bit. Um, yeah, so it's been a super exciting day. Um, Malisha and I kind of started with this early, um, we were hoping to launch a lot earlier than we did today, but then we found a little glitch in our plan, um, which I'm not going to bore you with, but it, it required like another few hours of work. And then every time we do it, it's like, we have to like hit publish and then the patterns will be up. And then we have to go like jump through a bunch of other hoops. Like, cause I have a whole list of like the things we have to do, you know, like make sure the patterns are published, write the Instagram post. And then it's like hitting launch on a bunch of stuff. And um, it was so funny today because like one one part of the process wasn't working at all link tree. Um, and so we had the patterns published and you guys were like so on it. Like I hadn't put up my Instagram post or anything, but you guys were like so on it that you were already like looking at, <laughs> at them. And like I was getting messages about the patterns before I'd even like announced them. So I just have to say thank you guys for your excitement about all of this. Um, it really is like it just makes my I was going to say it makes my day, but it makes my life. It makes my life to know that you are all so into what we do. And um, I'm glad you I'm glad you love the new patterns. I'm glad you love them. Um, one thing. And yeah, let's just because um, I told you yesterday. I know I gave away too much yesterday. Um, so one thing I'm kind of bummed about today is that I don't actually have. Well, I have like a million Stanwick skirts to wear. Um, but all of the Hepburn tops that we made are with the illustrator at the moment. Cause she like, that's part of the process is we like photograph and then the patterns go to our technical illustrator, Robin, to make like the line drawings and all of the um, drawings that you see in the instructions. And then once we're finally done with everything and everything's going to the printer, then they come back to me. So she has all those right now. She actually just wrote to me yesterday and said, um, can I send those back to you? So I'll be getting all those goodies soon. So I can do like little dress ups for you in the Hepburn tops and all the skirts and everything. Um, 
So yeah, super excited today. Um, big congrats to Malisha too, who has been here with me through pretty much this entire process of getting these two patterns ready. Um, Malisha, I was thinking today that kind of the way um, the way these two patterns started was when I first photographed the princess coat, which is like in 2018. And um, I did not have an assistant then. And for some reason I decided to put it on myself to like do a coat and pencil skirts. Um, so I did the coat and then I did just the pencil skirt from the Stanwick skirt. And I just kind of lost steam on both of those projects. And then when Malisha came to work for me, she saw the princess coat pictures and she like died. She was like, why haven't you released this? What, why are you just sitting on this? Like, what are you doing with your life? And so that is when we got the princess coat together. And then we did another photo shoot for more versions of the princess coat. And like, we totally expanded like what Stanwick was going to be. Cause I initially thought I would just release it just as just a pencil skirt that would go with the princess coat, which is why you saw it in that brown tweed. So the princess coat jacket with the tweed skirt. So they were initially supposed to be kind of a pair, but then um, we, the princess coat became a huge, pro well, I mean, these are all huge projects, but um, the princess coat, became just a really huge project that we released it on its own. And then we started thinking about um, the skirt um, and what we release it with. And we started thinking about tops. So, and so I added more designs to Stanwick at that point. And that's when the circle skirt came about, um, which is what I'm wearing right now. And then um, Hepburn, I started sketching as like a really simple um, like boat neck, pull over top. And then um, I got really excited when I could, I realized all the sort of vintage details I could pull um, and add to that pattern to make it like a mega knit top pattern. So like that little band collar, it has the bow in the back. There's the, um, the pussycat bow, which is that big floppy bow, the bishop sleeve. There are like four different lengths of sleeves. Um, there's the little ruched shoulder version with bows. So yeah, there's like a million, well, there's not a million, there's 21. <laughs> there's 21 different tops. And then the skirt is just also like, once I added the, the full skirt to the pencil skirt, I was like, okay, we can exchange the waistbands, but what if we added like removable, removable bibs, removable suspender straps. We did the little pinafore thing with the ruffles on the shoulders. So, yeah, I mean, there's just so much. I was like, can we go through the photos together? Like, can I show, I have, an, I have two laptops right here. Can we like go through the photos together and I'll just like take you through some of the options? Why don't you guys tell me if you can see? Like, can you see, is that anything? Or is this idea just like, it's not gonna work. I don't think it's gonna work. Um, I wish, I wish I could share my screen with you. Maybe we need to do this on Zoom. You can see it. Um, all right, so I'll do my best. So let's see, let's talk about Stanwick. I feel like I'm giving a, um, I'm giving a presentation. Um, yeah, so there's a little bit of a glare. All right, you can kind of see him. I'll, I won't spend too long on this, guys, I promise. Um, Okay, so this is the beautiful Vera wearing um, wearing the Stanwick skirt in felt, which is what I'm wearing now. Um, angle a little downwards. I feel like that makes it worse from what I see. Like that seems worse. That, oh, da it's downwards that way. All right, you can follow along on your screens too. <laughs> PowerPoint. Um, so there are two different um, pocket options for, the full skirt, one is a scoop, which I'm wearing right now. And later I'll get up so you can see the full size of these pockets. This one has the chevron pocket, which comes to a point and it's really cute. Um, so this is the pencil skirt that you all have been totally dying over. Um, so this one has cool little pockets. So pockets were kind of like a bend it towards us. What does that mean, guys? 
like that. You want it to be closer. See, I feel like that makes the glare worse. How's that? How's that? Um, so this is the pencil skirt. I'm just going to go through this quickly with the little pockets. Um, that's my butt. Um, pocket shot, little, uh, little decorative buttons there. Um, so there, you, yeah, you can see how it goes with the, um, the jacket. Uh, oh, this is the top I'm wearing right now that Malisha actually sewed. This is a Rita blouse so showed with the, um, shown with the pencil skirt. Um, yeah, this is one of the first things that Malisha sewed for me. I hired her like freelance to do a little bit of seamstress work and she made this. Are you allowed to pre-order today? You're encouraged to pre-order today. Um, my butt again. Um, <laughs> control. <laughs> Guys, this is getting really complicated. Maybe we just need to do this later. Control, shift, what? Um, all right, listen, I'm just going to go through. I'm just going to go through. Um, no one's allowed to say they wish they were skinnier. You all have beautiful bodies. Um, okay, so that's the waistband, has a little um, little sort of sweetheart shape. Will there be a thing for Patreon members? If you are in the Patreon tiers, um, you will have received notifications on your benefits. So you tried and the website would not allow you to pre-order. Um, can you send us an email? Because we've been getting a ton of pre-orders today. So um, okay, so there is Vera wearing the green top. That's a bishop sleeve with a slim pencil skirt. Huge purple tweed stanwick um, with suspenders. I'm going to show you that pocket in a little bit. Oh, the plaid one with the pinafore. You can see that it crosses in the back. Um... Yeah, and that is, so the pinafore and the suspenders are all removable, so you can just wear the skirt, too. Um, just the skirt, you can see the chevron detail there. And we're back. So let's just go through, we got to do like a crowd cast or something. God, maybe we should do that. Should we do that next? No, I haven't set it up yet. Maybe tomorrow we can do the crowd cast and I can tell you just a little bit more. Um, Hepburn top. So this is the, uh, this is the big floppy bow version. It has a really cool crossover detail in the back. Um, this is this very simple boat neck version with the three quarter sleeves. Short sleeve version with a little band collar. This has a bow in the back. Back bow, everyone. Um, this is the ruched shoulder version. It has little bows on it. So cute. Little bow on each shoulder. You can see a little stripe matching there. Vera again in her green top. Oh, it has a V. They all have V backs. And this is a long sleeve with the pussycat bow. Here you can see the crossover in the back a little bit better. How the, the that's how the bow attaches. And there you go. That's all the pictures. So, yeah, maybe we'll do like a crowd cast kind of thing where I can share my screen with you and I can like really take you take you through it. Um, that would be really fun. I'm so glad you like them. Um, yeah. So lots of different variations. Um, we were really excited to do separates. Um, totally different from what we've done for charm patterns in the past before, I think. Um, yeah, Vera is a great model. Um, so yeah, if you're kind of wondering like how we choose second models, um, one of the things that we got requests for this time around was, so on the last round for the last photo shoot, we used a model who was a size 16 H Susie is Susie here. Sometimes she joins us and, um, she looked amazing in those patterns. And then we got requests to see something kind of between um, like my size and the, and Susie's size. So people were kind of saying like, you know, I'm kind of more along the average, like 10, 12. Can we see, can we see models in that range? So, I mean, I love the idea of just trying different models and, um, and then we can get a lot of different representation. And so Vera is a size 
10 G, I think, in charm patterns. So, um, and we also, we have some more patterns coming out that we shot at the same time. And we had another model who was also a size 10 and she was like an H cup. So um, we, we like to mix it up. Um, okay, you can find the pre-order on the Charm Patterns site. So if you go to charmpatterns.com and then go to the Patterns tab, you'll see three different options for pre-ordering. You'll see the Stanwick skirt on its own, the Hepburn top on its own, and then a bundle. So the bundle, it saves you like a dollar, guys. Um, so... But what we found out this morning, which is the big glitch this morning, is that our pre-order plugin, which I like because it helps us keep track of pre-orders really well, but it won't let you order other things along with a pre-order item. So you couldn't even order Stanwick and Hepburn together as a pre-order, which obviously would have been a disaster. So we put them together as a bundle and then we were like, well, it seems weird to not give them any little deal for buying the bundle. So, but we hadn't really planned to do any special deals. So we just kind of shaved a little bit off of the price for the bundle. But um, yeah, so if you want both, make sure that you go to the bundle listing because otherwise, if you try to add multiple separate things to your cart, it's gonna kick you, it's gonna kick the things out of the cart. Does Vera get to keep the clothes? We actually keep the clothes as like archive samples. Um, I have, I have gifted samples to models before, but it's not like a standard, standard thing that we do. Um, but we pay, we pay our models. So yeah. Um, yeah. So the paper, if you guys haven't heard, it's going to be a little different this time. It's not our standard, um, tissue, that really thin tissue that we usually print on. Um, it's more like my books. So it's the double-sided heavy paper. So you will need to trace. Um, and <laughs> um, I see models to hire. That's exciting. Um, so yeah, you will need to trace. And the reason for that is that our tissue printer is currently shut down because of the coronavirus. So obviously we are hoping they come back soon, but um, just with the timing, we wanted to still be able to keep these patterns coming to you. So we found a second option, which was um, this heavy paper, which is gonna be double-sided. So it's a little different. And um, I did make sure to warn you about that in the listings. So we will, um, we're not gonna order our usual large quantity that we would order. We're kind of thinking of this as limited edition. And then we will order tissue when our printer is back up and running. Uh, yeah. So yeah, and a lot of people love the um, the paper, the heavy paper. So that's why I'm kind of like, well, this could be a bonus. If you want the heavier paper, you know, get it now um, because we are going to be going back to the tissue. Well, that's the plan for now anyway. Yeah. So Yes, if you're if you're on Patreon, you have received all notifications that you should be getting about these two patterns. So if you don't see anything and you expected to see something, please go to Patreon and look in your posts. OK. All right. <laughs> you ordered that bundle so fast, my head is still spinning. We got a ton of orders. Ever. I when my when my inbox refreshed after we we hit launch, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. So thank you everyone. I just have to say thank you so much for your enthusiasm and all of the, the orders that have come in today. And um, it just really, uh, it's such a relief. Um, we've spent a lot of time on these patterns and there's been a lot of money invested in them already. And I'm so glad you guys are excited. And it's just a relief to see that our pre-order is happening. Um, as as usual and also i mean i was kind of patting i was patting both me and malisha on the back today saying um you know the fact that we kind of got these out at around the same time we expected to with our tissue plant closing is kind of amazing so i'm just so glad we're able to do it um now and it's going to um it's going to give you a lot of things to to sew while we're all home <laughs> who votes for no more tissue paper? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've looked into it in the past. The thing is for something like the princess coat or the night and day, 
um, you, that's going to be a huge pattern. Like we already use those big boxes and it would have to be about double that. So you'd be looking at about a, a war and peace sized pattern that weighs, um, like a, a sack of bricks. So, um, yeah, the heavy paper presents a little bit of a, a, a challenge for our bigger patterns. Um, yeah. So let's see. So again, guys, I see a lot of questions about the Patreon. Um, I, I would really like it if you guys could go to Patreon and look at your posts because all of the information is there. Um, I feel like a lot of that information is just for patrons. So, um, if we could not like do it in a more public place, that would be great. Um, so please just go to your posts. All of your information is there. If you have questions, you can DM me. I've been get, also been getting a ton of DMs, guys. So please just be patient with me um, if you're waiting to hear back about something. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I just addressed the paper thing. Um, yeah. So any more any more questions? Questiones. Um, One hundred and seventy pre-orders so far. That's great. That is amazing. Um, will we be doing sewing tutorials with the skirt and how to sew knit for the top? So, guys, um, yeah, we've already um, we have already shot a tutorial that will be coming out this month on the Stanwick skirt on one of the variations. And then we will also be releasing a new Patreon. Um, tutorial that corresponds to the Stanwick skirt later this month as well. So the full length video on YouTube, it'll be an hour long and it's a start to finish tutorial um, like you've gotten used to on YouTube, like we've been doing lately. Um, and then we have a whole new huge project for Patreon related to the Stanwick that has downloads, it has an hour long video, it has special guest stars, it has Malisha, um, it has all sorts of exciting stuff. So, so I do not have the garments at home besides the one that I'm wearing because um, they're all with the illustrator right now, which is what I was saying at the beginning of the of the live stream. But check this out, guys. This is one of the felt um, Stanwick skirts. I don't know if you can see um, this. So it's a full circle skirt with gores in the front and in the back lap zipper sorry this it's really i should have i'm going to do a different angle another day for you guys um but then the pockets go from the front princess seam to the back princess seam so you can see can you see that this is the bottom edge i'll run my hand along it this is the bottom edge of the pocket here this is the upper edge so huge, huge pocket. This is the side seam right here. Um, so yeah, it's a really cool, huge pocket. It has like some extra ease in it. So you can see it kind of like stands away from the body too, which is really fun. Um, yeah, these are serious pockets. You guys always say how much you like pockets. So I hope you were serious about that. <laughs> yeah, they're huge. They are huge pockets. Um, <laughs> enormous, enormous pockets. Yeah, I can double as a carry on. <laughs> yeah, so that's what we'll be doing this month. Um, we kind of planned some tutorials for next month as well, but you know, given the current situation, we are kind of having to rethink our content a little bit. But, um, yeah, I mean, there's if you're looking for information about sewing knits, there's a lot of it in the um, in the booklet, like. I don't know if you guys have seen our booklets, but they have like really long fitting chapters. They have techniques like it's not just like um, a one sheet kind of deal. Um, yeah, <laughs> you're serious. <laughs> Kangaroos are jealous of those pockets. Yeah. Yeah, these are serious, guys. Oh, and the great thing about felt is that you don't have to finish the edges. So the upper edge of the pocket is unfinished and the hem is also unfinished. So that's fun. Um, Henry, do you want to come sit in my lap? Henry would match my skirt. He never sits in my lap, by the way. So this is, this is not going to happen. 
so cute. Hattie's right here. Um, I think my baby will fit in there. <laughs> yeah, no need to carry, no need to carry a pocketbook. No need for a stroller. Uh, Missy, yeah, this is wool felt. How are you, Missy? What do you think of the photos? So Missy did the hair and makeup for um, these photos. So you can see some of her amazing work on me and on Vera. Um, how many yards of felt? This is two and a half yards. So, but keep in mind that felt is generally 72 inches wide. Oh, let's breathe. Let's breathe. I'm too, I'm too worked up, everyone. Let's preen. Let's breathe. <sighs> so this felt I got um, from a site called A Child's Dream Come True. <laughs> I always thought that was the weirdest name. So they, um, oh, actually, no, 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 no. I got this felt from B&J. So they have wide wool felt, but I have a couple sources that I really like for wool felt. Um, a child's dream come true. Um, and what's the other one? Felt pod. Is that what it's called, Malisha? Yeah, the felt pod. Um, so yeah, that's fun. And what are their questions? Um, that name is hilarious. I know. <laughs> um, what is my Rita made from? This is a silk crepe. So this is also from B and J and, um, yeah, again, to harken back to Malisha, as I mentioned, this is one of the first projects she sewed for me sort of like, um, remotely on a freelance kind of basis. And so I sent her this like silk crepe to make a Rita blouse out of and it came back and I was like, oh, she's so good. Like it was so beautifully made and like silk crepe can isn't always an easy fabric to work with. So kudos to Malisha. Is felt itchy? Um, wool can be a little bit, I think it all kind of depends on your sensitivity to wool. Um, and felt isn't necessarily made from wool. You can also get it in acrylic and rayon blends. So if you're sensitive to wool, I would say that, yes, it might be itchy. If you're allergic to wool, it'll definitely be itchy. Um, I am I have it against my bare legs right now because I can't be bothered to wear a petticoat in my confinement. Um, so, yeah, it's not bothering me, but I can see how if you had a sensitivity to wool, maybe it would bother you. Um, that's because Malisha is a pro. She is. Um, Will I be having any new patterns coming out soon? Just a few. <laughs> yeah, so if you've just joined, we're talking about the new pre-orders. We just put up a pre-order for two new patterns. So check it out on the Charm Patterns site. Does the felt stretch out? I keep having people ask me that, and I've never, I haven't noticed the felt stretching at all. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Malisha, did you, did we notice that? I can't, I don't think we had a problem with the felt stretching um yeah and once you have the waistband on this is the straight waistband by the way there is a straight um waistband option so once you have the waistband on it will cheap felt will stretch out oh okay as i mentioned yesterday i have um champagne taste when it comes to felt so um this is the 100 percent wool stuff so yeah we haven't noticed any issues with it stretching Trouble alert. <laughs> um, mods, mods, help. Um, would I wear a petticoat with it? Yeah, I did for um, for the shoot. You can see I'm wearing one of the um, Malco Modes met, net petticoats underneath there. I think the Melanie. So, yeah, it really um, helps give it even more shape. But you don't have to. Um, the chenille pillow. You like my grandma decor? Sure, you can use twill. You can really use any bottom weight fabric that is not a knit. Hi, Jenny. Jenny, did you guys have daylight savings time? Is it even earlier for you now? I thought you guys were talking about that. <laughs> um. 
Um, any more questions? Let's see. Can I use a wool melton for the skirt? Yeah, I think so. As long as it's not like, you know, some melton is very, very thick. Um, so I would just, if it's like a thinner melton, you might be fine. Um, the wool felts that we've used, I believe are like one millimeter. This one might be three millimeters thick. So um, it's a lot of skirt. <laughs> so I would just say like, you know, with the melton, be careful because some meltons can be like a quarter inch thick. So just kind of watch out for that. Um. <laughs> Can we talk about my home paint color names sometimes? Sure. I do remember, I love paint color names. Um, this one is Ballet Slippers from Benjamin Moore. And it's this is um, kind of a more subdued pink. The one in my dining room or where we normally shoot is um, a more medium rose pink. That one's um, Benjamin Moore Misted Rose. And in my hallway, which is way more muted than this one, it's just like a very hint of blush, is um, that one is called Cream Puff. Isn't that cute? Um, do I ever have insomnia? Not really. Um, <sighs> I remember the names like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's like a weird... Um, I love color names and I just, I remember them. Um, yeah, the my purple door, that color is, um, it has a really weird name. I Heart Potion. What the heck is that? And it's the most beautiful purple I've ever seen. That is a Sher Sherwin-Williams one. Um, pink fetish. <laughs> um, Will I do any fitting tutorials for the pencil version? Um, I hadn't really planned on it. Um, as I mentioned, we really do um, comprehensive fitting chapters. So um, I kind of try to think through, at least for the pencil skirt, I did try to think through all of the fitting changes you might need to do, which the most common ones would be a sway back, um, adjusting the hip width, and adjusting the length. So the directions for all of those are in the fitting chapter. So yeah, no plans for that right now. Where did the plum skirt fabric come from? That is a purple Harris tweed from B&J. And someone just asked about the plaid fabric. That is a, um, a wool plaid suiting for also from B&J. That one's a lot lighter and thinner. <sighs> okay. Linda, go back to sleep. What time is it where Linda is? I didn't, I missed this. It's 5.30 a.m. <laughs> Good morning, Linda. I was just thinking about Perth. Are you in Perth? I was just thinking about Perth. Um, I went there a couple of years ago and I like got to go to the beach and, um, and I dipped my toes in the Indian Ocean, which was really exciting. You want the denim pencil skirt fabric. Which one's the denim pencil skirt fabric? Oh, you might be um, that the red stripey top is with. That's actually not one of these patterns that it's paired with. Okay, yeah, so you might notice there's a little sneak peek of something coming out later, later, um, that is paired with that red and white top. But, um, that is a really, really cute denim fabric from B&J, and I think it's on their website. It has little um, multicolored speckles in it. It is so cute. I thought about getting more just to make more things out of it. Uh, you knew it. <laughs> yeah, the thing about um, photographing so many of these patterns together is that we ended up kind of mixing and matching some things. Um, and then when the patterns come out, we're like, uh. We didn't really want to give this away yet, but here it is. <laughs> um, yeah. So you're from Perth, Linda. Oh, nice. 
I was just thinking about you Perthians this morning for some reason. Um, Perthian, Perth, Perthians? Um, okay. We've got, we've got people from all over. <laughs> You're all predicting patterns. Guys, I have so much stuff coming out. Like, I don't think you even understand. Um, besides these two patterns, we have... Um, so like I said, we have um, a project coming out on Patreon this month. It's more of like an embellishment thing. And then on May 1st, you're going to get another pattern expansion. That's an entirely new project. Um, we have a standalone pattern coming out that's going to be released in a totally different way than we've done in the past. Um, and that should be out next month, too. Um, we're planning stuff for the entire summer. We have more charm patterns that we've shot. Like... There, don't you worry. Don't worry. <laughs> You're going to be getting lots and lots of patterns. Um, so, yeah. Don't tell us too much. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not giving anything away. Um, I need it in small doses or I'll go crazy. Yeah. See, you guys don't want me to give you all of this stuff at once. Um, yes. We've been very busy. We've been very, very busy. Um, yeah. So, I mean, this is kind of why I was so excited to start the Patreon is because I just feel like there's no limit to the ideas we have and the things that we can do. And um, like just giving like publishing a pattern with 81 skirt variations in it is um, like a lot of people think it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like people that I've talked to have said like, well, don't give away all your ideas and, you know, don't put too many things in one pattern because then they'll never need to buy another. And I'm like, oh, no, there's so much more. There's like so much more. And I love just packing as much as possible into one pattern. I'm like I can't really stop myself. And there's like always more ideas. Like as you guys see, there's like a ton of new stuff that we can be doing. And um, yeah, I find the variations really exciting. And I think that's one of the things that I really like um, is the challenge of coming up with variations in one pattern. Like the Hepburn top is a great example. Like once you start working on something, you can see the different ways it can go together. So for instance, um, there are, there's like the fitted kimono sleeve that has a um, a long length, a three quarter length, a short length. And then we were trying to do this like cap length that didn't really work that well on its own because it kind of gaped because of the kimono shape here. But what I found was that we could add on a bishop sleeve extension that would be like a drop shoulder, which was sort of a, um, a popular look in the 50s. So instead of making it a cap sleeve, we just made that a cutting line that you can add the bishop sleeve onto. And then um, we were kind of playing around with it. And like, I'll be looking at vintage patterns and looking for inspiration. And um, I saw a little bow, a little like ruched bow shoulder top. And I was like, I'm gonna try that on that little cap sleeve to see if it like improves the look of it. And then when we did like channels through the shoulder seams and you kind of like thread a ribbon in and out, ruche it up and then tie little bows, it looks so cute and it makes the fit totally work. Um, so things like that, like figuring out, like there, that's, that was like two more variations that I hadn't even thought of at the beginning. So like at the beginning, it was just kind of, it was going to kind of be like a simple boat neck top. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, then it was just really fun to kind of see what else we could do with it. And like the band I always really wanted to do, that's kind of like a fold over band collar with a little bow in the back. And then that um, the pussycat bow, as um, we're calling it, is like a very long, floppy bow. And that one kind of came, I was like looking at the V-neck version, because you can just make a plain V-neck front. And I was looking at the V-neck and I was like, how can we make a bow? Like, how can we get a bow set into that? And so that's when I did these sort of like long strips that kind of crossed over each other in the back, kind of shaped around each other, have these long tails and then tie it in a big bow at the V front. So, yeah, it's just really fun. Um, it's really fun to just kind of be looking at the pattern as you go along, working on it. 
And this is kind of what I was getting at with the inspiration talk that we did the other day was that there's no, there's often like not one single source that I can point to. Um, I would say that like we called it the Hepburn top for Audrey Hepburn because the boat neck with the three quarter sleeves is very like Sabrina, like little black top with the capris in the kitchen. Um, and, and then it just kind of snowballs and like the inspiration is coming from all these different sources. So it's kind of like a mashup of like different pictures, different patterns, um, all sorts of different elements that I've seen um, and then bringing it together into one pattern. Huh. <laughs> Janet, you can't stop making Lamour dresses. Um, you've already made 10. Oh my gosh. You might, we might be in competition for having the most Lamour dresses then. That's awesome. Hi, Jen. Jen is here. Um, <laughs> Jenny hasn't seen the, um, oh yeah. You got to go to the patterns page. Will the pre-order be open until the release or will it stop earlier? So we've, we've been kind of um, intentionally um, ambiguous about the dates on this um, because everything's a little up in the air right now. Um, so we, what we're saying is we hope to be shipping by the end of the month um, and the pre-order will go until we start shipping, okay? And the PDF, release will come when we start shipping. Like on the day we start shipping, that's when we release the PDFs. Susie's here. Thanks, Susie. We were talking about you earlier. Did you miss it? Um, I was saying how you modeled for us and do like the different models that we've used. Um, so everyone, Susie is here. She is the um, the model I was talking about that we used for Lamore and Liz, who is so gorgeous. Um, all right. Um, is it possible to make any of the Hepburn variations in Jersey fabric? The Hepburn is, um, drafted for knits, but it's for stable knits. So it's all about the stretch percentage. Um, we're saying 10 to 25% stretch. So that's similar to what we did for the Peter Pan Bolero. So you're looking for like ponties, double knits, that kind of thing. So it's really all about measuring your stretch percentage. If you go too slinky, too stretchy, um, the fit won't be quite right. <laughs> Aw, you little cuties. Malisha and Susie are, are having a little reunion. You missed it. <laughs> okay. stable knit sample top. Yeah, I did kind of show off some in one of these lives. So um, yeah, I have talked about it before. I talk about it in the instructions, how to measure the percentage of stretch in your um, in your fabric. So if you've missed it in one of these talks, um, like I said, keep going back to those instructions. Like we really try to give you so much information in there. Yeah, so if you saw my fabric live talk that I did, God, I don't know, was it last week, the week before, we talked about, my mom was here, she can testify that I was um, talking about how to show stretch percentage, and it's also, like I said, it's explained in the booklet. Okay. So yeah, someone just asked about buying fabric online. I mean, I would look for places that give you the stretch percentage in the descriptions. Um, and here in the US, like two places I know that do that are Gorgeous Fabrics and Emma One Sock. All right, which I really, two things I really, two sites I really like for that reason because they give you the stretch percentages. So yeah, check those out. And then like failing that, I would say you're just looking for those fabric terms, you know, like you want to look for Ponte, you want to look for double knit. Um, and then if possible, see if you can get the stretch percentage from the, um, from whoever runs the site. 
Yeah, there's also some stretch info in the video for the Peter Pan Bolero if you're on Patreon. That is true. Okay. All right, everyone. Okay, so Erica just uh, said that um, she ordered a knit from Blackbird Fabrics and they listed percentage too. Yeah, okay. So yeah, the um, that's great. The, um, the most important thing when ordering knit fabric is to know the stretch percentage. Um, yeah, because it can just vary so much from one fabric to another. And um, that is what, that's what makes it stable. That's what makes it a stable knit is the stretch percentage. So I'll just repeat my little spiel. You're going to take four inches in your hand, stretch it out. And you don't want those four inches to stretch, excuse me, to more than five inches. Okay. Five inches is the cutoff because then it's too stretchy. It has more than 25% stretch. So you want to give it a little test. Okay. Yeah. Ponty and double knits. That's what you're really looking for. Okay. Yeah, and th these stable knits are really easy to sew, guys. I've seen a couple people say that they're scared of um, sewing knits or they have trouble sewing knits. And I personally think the hardest knits to sew are the ones that are really slinky and have a lot of stretch. So I, I really don't feel like as long as you use the right needle, which would be a stretch or ballpoint needle, you're not going to have a problem with these types of fabrics. Yeah, they're, yeah, as Jenny just said, they're really the same to sew as wovens, which is why we like to use them. Because <laughs> at Charm Patterns, we are definitely more accustomed to using wovens. All right, everyone. Oh my gosh, Marin, Gorgeous Fabrics has a, a yellow rose knit. <laughs> You have to get that. Have you bought it already <laughs> in the past two minutes? Um, yeah, and the other thing that is helpful is someone just, Evie just mentioned a walking foot. Um, I found that when sewing my Peter Pan boleros, um, more, more helpful than a walking foot was the adjustable pressure foot presser. I have to say that slowly or I'll really mess it up. So for these stable knits, you're going to want to be using a lower presser foot pressure because otherwise the, the foot is going to hold on to your fabric and kind of stretch it out as you're sewing it. So it's usually a dial on top of your machine and it goes from like one to five. So for stable knits, I would say you'd want your presser foot pressure to be closer to like two rather than in the, in the center. So like one and a half, two, um, it may not have, it may have too much stretch. Well, you have to get it anyway and do something with it. Don't you think? Um, okay. So I'm seeing some good recommendations outside of the U S lush fabrics in Australia has the percentages on the site. Yeah. So yeah, any more questions about the patterns? Anything I can answer while we're still here? Hattie, is there anything you want to know from Hattie? Hi, princess. You here to stare at mommy? Hattie just needs a belly rub. 35 <laughs> percent. Um, I, you know, I mean, if it's the perfect fabric, if it's a little. OK, so I'm already telling you how to break my rules. But if it's a little bit more stretch and you're like, oh, I just really want to make it in this yellow rose fabric, um, then you could make it. But you'll probably want to take the seams in a little bit more because you'll want it to be a little bit snugger. Um, you know, you know, we break your rules. I know you guys do. Every time I come up with a pattern, I'm like, here's what you make it in. You're like, but yeah, but can we make it in this, this, and this? I'm like, I know you will. I know you will. Patty is all of us right now. Patty, your public is adoring you. Um, 
Oh, this is a question I get a lot too, is can, can the skirts be used with bodices from other patterns? And the answer is not exactly. Um, it's really, it's like a, a delicate art to get patterns to interchange and not all inter, not all patterns can interchange with each other. So there are some patterns that are well suited to interchange, like our L series, they are all like really easy to make interchange with each other exactly so that all the seam lines match up, all the darts match up, all the princess lines match up to the skirt darts. Like there's a lot of factors to making things match up. And so it's not something that we can do with every pattern, especially because something like a strapless bodice, like the L'Amour is gonna have like very, very little ease, but a skirt like this, you want to have an inch of ease, okay? So you can't really get those two things to match up in the pattern. That said, if it's your dream to make a L'Amour bodice with this skirt, you can figure it out on your own by walking the pattern pieces together and adjusting them, but it's not something that we would do in the pattern to package for you because it, it doesn't it doesn't really work that way. And you guys don't really want this skirt to have no ease, trust me. Like an inch is good. <laughs> I always say no, but you do it anyway. Yeah, I mean, you guys, you have to test this stuff. Like if you want to do something that's outside of the recommendations for a pattern, um, it's you can't really go to the person who made the pattern in a certain set of parameters and ask them how to do it because they haven't tested it in those. Like they didn't make, they didn't intend the product to be used that way. So what you have to do if you want to break the rules is just try it, honestly. Like because, um, because I haven't tried every, you know, iteration of rule breaking that you're going to want to do. Like I designed the patterns to like be made in a certain fabric and have a certain ease profile and all of that. So if you want to mess around with all that stuff, like go for it. But I'm not going to have the answer for you because I, I haven't tried it in every fabric. So what you're going to have to do is try it. And um, that's like the biggest thing I tell students, too, is like, if you want to, if you want to know if something is going to work, the only way to know if it's not something that you've seen done before is to try it yourself. So, so you're going to have to do samples. You don't have to make the whole skirt. Um, yeah, Franken pattern, hacking, all that stuff. It's all good. But if you're going to hack something, you can't go to the person who designed it and ask them how to hack it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Hackers got to be rebels. You got to test it yourself. Um, so, yeah. Instructions are more like guidelines. <laughs> Go for it, but don't involve me in it. I just don't know. I don't know. Like, I, you know, I haven't made this skirt that was drafted for a woven and a knit. So, yeah, like, do it. Go for it. Um, but, yeah, you can do samples. You can test it out. You can walk the pattern pieces together to see how it's gonna work. Like, that's what hacking is all about, right? It's just being being um, experimental. I kill you. <laughs> I'm trying to be inspirational. <laughs> yeah, I fully, fully support you guys getting crazy and experimental with the patterns. I just don't have all the answers for you on how it's all going to work. <laughs> Would velvet work or is it too stretchy? Um, well, I'm not sure which pattern you're talking about. Oh, Hattie Belly. Um, so velvet isn't necessarily stretchy. There are velvet knits that you might make the Hepburn top out of. So you could, again, test out the stretch percentages on that and see. Um, there are also velvets that have no stretch in them. And like for the skirt, you know, what would be amazing is cotton velveteen, which has no stretch. And that's pretty easy to sew. Um, <laughs> I'm very inspirational. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. You set your hair today. That's great to hear. <laughs> uh, 
Um, are you guys witnessing the belly? Excuse me. That's better. Hattie, they can see you now. <laughs> um, Jen, you got your cotton velveteen. I think that would be so amazing for this skirt. Oh yeah, you need more belly rubs. Hattie, you're a YouTube star. Oh. <laughs> Don't point at us. Look at This is her little blankie that she loves a lot. This little fuzzy blankie. Mm. How cute is that? She's a very good baby. Are you tired, Amy? She's a ham. <laughs> She has such a personality. Where did you come from? Oh, it's her adopt anniversary on Saturday. I adopted her on my birthday four years ago. Oh, oh, oh. Um... Where can I get some of the purple roses that I had back in the day? Not sure what you mean. Which purple roses? Was it one of my fabrics? Happy Adoptiversary. Um, thank you guys. Oh, you gotta go? You feel like you're being watched? Um, the Liberty Purple Roses, you can go, but you're going to regret it because the cuddling is happening up here. Um, <laughs> is Hattie getting cake? Um, the Purple Liberty Roses, I'm afraid, are not actually available anymore. That is the Carlene print from Liberty of London. And, um, they did, a, they do like various, I'm arranging my skirt. Oh. I feel very, um. Scarlett O'Hara right now, or like one of those dolls that goes on top of a toilet paper roll. <sighs> Did anyone have a grandma who had those, by the way? Um, speaking, okay, I'm sorry, I'll finish your, I'll finish it. Um, enough stardom for today. That was a limited edition color, and they um, come out with limited edition colors in that print fairly regularly. So, um, so that one is no longer available. I'm sorry. I just, I did just find my scraps of it and I'm going to make myself a little bolero to go with my Lamore dress. I'm going to make a little Dorothy bolero. Um, come through skirt. Mm, just a little subtle skirt. So guys, my mom has been sending me, um, baby pictures of myself today. And it has been so funny. There's actually, I was wearing one um, little dress that kind of looks like a Stanwick skirt um, predecessor. Is that the right word? Moira Rose, are you here? Predecessor. Um, with a little shoulder ruffles, little pinafore style. So, and I, I had to send them to Malisha. Um, and I was wearing like a little bonnet in one of them and I'm like on a little rocking horse. Like I look very wholesome. Um, and my mom says I was adorable. Bye, Marin. <laughs> you have to get on a work call? Lame. Thanks, Marin. We'll see you tomorrow. Malisha has power. Um, I need to post them to Instagram. <laughs> I will. I will. I should do that. Um, yeah, I was really cute, right, Malisha? Little baby Gertie. Little baby Gertie wearing a pinafore with um, ruffle shoulders and a gingham blouse with a Peter Pan collar and puff sleeves. How cute is that? <laughs> um, yeah. So what else do I have to remind you guys about? 
Um, pre-order your patterns. Um, I have to post it right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, I'm not going to try to show it on the, why can't I just share things with you guys? Wouldn't that be nice if I could just show you things? Um, you're not going to be able to see this. You can't even see that. I'll post it to my stories later. Um, <laughs> This needs to be witnessed. I know I was really so cute. Um, like on Zoom. Yeah, maybe in the um, the birthday party on Zoom, I can share them because that's um, on Twitch. I can share. Um, blonde. I was like bald and very I had very light hair. Um all right, guys. So this was really fun, as always. Um, thank you so much for your <laughs> enthusiasm. Um, it was great to hang out with you all, as always. Um, and yeah, just thank you so much for your pre-orders. Um, if you're if you miss what we talked about, then just go to the Charm Pattern site, and you can see um, the new Stanwick skirt and the Hepburn top, and also um, I posted them to Instagram. So thank you so much. Happy pattern launch day to all of you. It's like a, it's like a worldwide holiday. I was gonna say national holiday. It's an international holiday. And we should all go relax now and eat Oreos, <laughs> which I've been doing a little too much of. Um, yeah, so go check it out. Thank you all, everyone. Um, and I will see you again tomorrow. So we'll do this again at five tomorrow. And then on Friday, we're going to be doing um, a Zoom sewing circle rather than a live. So if you're on Patreon, do check that out. You will get the link to our little birthday party Zoom sewing circle. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. It was great to see you all. Mwah. Goodbye. I'll see you tomorrow.